welcome to the Two Robbies podcast, your destination for in-depth discussion and analysis of the Premier League and the Champions League. I'm Robbie Musto, he's Robbie Earl, and here are today's topics. Chelsea dropped two crucial points at home after a 1-1 draw with Everton. Manchester City thrashed Leeds 7-0 at the Etihad. Liverpool come from behind to secure a victory against Newcastle. Arsenal's crucial result in their 2-0 victory over West Ham, and we celebrate the legendary career of Sergio Aguero. All that coming up in today's episode. Okay, Robbie Earl, uh, mm-hmm. top of that list, topics yeah. list was Chelsea. And I think we've realised how things are going in the Premier League. And we talk about mm-hmm. a top three now that mm-hmm. went down from a top four. Are we starting to think there could be a top two? Is are you With this result for Chelsea, is that Good where man. we're heading? Can I hold your reins a little bit? Can I just hold you back? <laughs> Do, question. Is, is there not a bigger topic that we, we need to discuss in terms of COVID and games played and games available and what's happened in the last week? Should we not just touch that before we then get into Chelsea? Because I actually think there's part of it, this discussion will, lead, will, will, will bleed into the Chelsea discussion. But you're mm. right. Um, just in terms of COVID, Rob, and, and mm-hmm. you know, today we've had six games game, um, postponed, uh, five over the weekend, one today. We've got nine games postponed in the last week. Uh, so, th- as things stand, this weekend, match week 17s, there'll be five games that play and five games postponed. Um, obviously, uh, drastic measures from the Premier League to try and keep the league going, uh, to keep some momentum and those that can play in the safety east um, circumstances or trying to play. Do you feel, Rob, we're getting to the point where it might need a lockdown? It might need a, what the people are calling, breaking the chain, maybe a week off. Would it have been advisable maybe to go a week off and then let's get everybody ready for that Boxing Day game? That's 10 days in terms of isolation and getting things right. Or are you OK with, with where we are in the Premier League? Tra- Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Long sip of my coffee. Um, are right. you you happy playing the games for the, with the teams that are fit enough and able to 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 get enough players out there? Yes, I am. Um, you know that's 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 kind of controversial. Some uh, fans might say, you know what, it's not kind of fair. Some clubs have got more positive cases than others. Some teams are weaker mm. than others. Mm. I'm. I just feel, Rob, that. If the game can go ahead, let's get the games played. I just, I'm worrying. I'm just worrying that that there's going to be more and more cases, more and more games postponed. And when we can get games on, when it's okay with the Premier League, and I'm sure they're going to hear about it from every single club about how many cases they've got. We know that it's kind of case by case um, basis, but the Premier League have, I, I should imagine, pretty similar parameters for calling yeah. games off. Yeah. I just feel, yeah, you, you could take everybody out of it for a weekend. Is that really going to stop the uptick in, in cases over the next few weeks and months? Probably not. So I feel let's get the games played. You know, fixture mm-hmm. congestion, uh, you know, right now there's enough weeks and there's enough midweeks that they can they can throw some games in there, rearrange games. I'm just worried, Rob, like, you know, like of, of COVID season where there's so many games last year that shoved together. I don't want to see that. So I'm okay with them playing the games. Let's get them played if they can. And obviously try and, and try and try the best that they can to get the games played. Do you feel differently to that? No, I, I, I'm with you. I, I believe if, if the two sides can put out strong enough teams and, and they can play in a safe enough environment, um, let's play the game. Why should, should should we not really in those circumstances? I mean, I've heard, I've heard and read some counter arguments today about the sporting integrity of the league and that you might be playing a team that's weakened because they might be missing four or five big name of uh, starters in the team. I get that, but I kind of think it, it's one of those situations where everybody's in the same boat. And if you can get a strong enough team out, of course, this probably helps the stronger, the bigger clubs with um, more depth in the squads. But um, I agree. I just think what, you know, it, to push games back that could be played, 
you know, to, to, to distort the league a little bit. When you look at teams like, like um, Spurs already, a couple of Premier League games behind, and if we go mm. three or four, just feel like the league gets distorted then as well. And there's all these catch-up games and, it, you know, it doesn't quite feel the same. So let's see how we go. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we, we can get these games played. The teams who are, have, have got the COVID outbreaks can get that isolation period and get players back onto the pitch. And um, hopefully, like, say, by Boxing Day, we, we can get back to to full uh, match week fixtures and, and, and everybody being fit and healthy and, and, and playing the games. Yeah, I just um, hope that the Premier League, Rob, I know they've, they've uh, kind of refreshed the protocols for Premier League yeah, clubs. Yeah. You know, with the social distancing. Um, yeah, I've heard. Less all physical the contacts. Emergency, yeah. Last time so, so indoors, yeah. Let's hope and, that and clubs I've, are doing think, that. And... I think, sorry, just to, to put in, sorry, mate, as well. I think, like... Mm. The experiences of last year, the experiences that people have been through now, I think should hold them in good stead. It's not the first time now we've seen these things. And I think having had last year and understanding it and, and maybe working with players and having those protocols in place hopefully mm. means that, that we, there's a bit more experience to, to deal with the things that are happening now. Do you think, and this maybe is an unfair question, Rob, uh, as we finish on this, different clubs have different amounts of, of virus. Is there... Of course, there's a randomness to it. We understand that. But certain yeah. clubs, do you think there's any difference? I'll put it like this. Is there any difference with the way that clubs are working around this virus than others? Is there anything to be said for uh, that? I think Liverpool... Mean, I just, it, are they managing the, the squad? You know, yeah, I know yeah. that Jurgen Klopp has been very public about he got boosted as soon as he could. I think he said he said 99% of the first-team squad are... are um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, he, he, he wants it more... He's not afraid to say what people's status is in terms of vaccinations. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think that's a difficult. I, I think it's a difficult one because yeah. obviously the civil rights different people have a right to either want the vaccine or not, and boosters mm. or not. Obviously, playing. I think what the clubs. I, I, I think the thing that the clubs must do is, is as you say, with these new pro protocols, be as stringent as they can yeah. to make sure these distance, to make sure this separation, to work with maybe those who haven't haven't been vaccinated, to keep goalkeepers apart because they're key players mm. and thing. I think there's all these things in place now where um, the play the, the clubs have to be stringent and the players really have to take this seriously because uh, the last thing we'd need is an outbreak into the new year that the league shut down and then we're, we're playing catch up again into what is going to be a, a World Cup year so um, you're right but hopefully um, you know the, the clubs are across that the managers and everybody take it seriously yep. and um, this doesn't go too far but obviously disappointing to you that five games off over the weekend but there is five games at play so moving forward to your question Mr Muster and, and Sorry, one mate, of the yeah. reasons why I, I, I just feed off on that with, with Chelsea is you know to, to, to start the game we have to uh, say that the, I think it was Lukaku, Werner and hudson Adoy have yeah. apparently posted, tested, po po tested positive even. And mm. they weren't a, uh, eligible or available to play, obviously, because of that. So it was a, a different looking Chelsea. Maybe some will suggest it, it's a challenge on their depth a little bit of Chelsea, a bit more rotation, certainly in, in, in the front areas of the pitch. Um, but it's a Chelsea, Rob, that is starting to... I would think caused a little bit of concern to Thomas Tuchel. It's not quite playing out, I think, right now. And, and it's more, it's not just necessarily the results, and, and we can talk about the results, but just some, like what you see with your eye. It's not quite fitting together as well as didn't it. And listen, they had, I think, up to 80% possession, had 20 shots, but you know, lack of taking chances, lack of real sort of threat in behind. It just doesn't quite feel like. It's the Chelsea that started the season that, you know, with Lukaku and everything looking at, and everyone going, wow, this, this team looked like they're ready to, re to really go the distance. Yeah, I think, I think first, first thing to say is that um, their, their team was still pretty strong today, Rob, mm. compared to Everton's. You know, Everton have got cases oh, of their own yeah. and injuries of mm. their own, and their team was a lot weaker, young players starting, young players coming off the bench. So fair play to yeah. Everton, and we'll give them credit. Yeah. Um, when the mm. time after we've just addressed Chelsea. So still a very strong team. I, I just think there's another example today, Rob, that the Chelsea's style of football, it, it's so it's so good in some ways, but it's so frustrating in other ways. They have so much control. I think, again, I think I've mentioned this a few times on the pod, their style of football, Rob, mm. is so slow. The build-up is so slow and so patient that that, yeah. that gives them tremendous control of games and it gives them tremendous territory in games but what does it also do it also enables 
in some ways encourages teams to park the bus. To drop off, yeah. To park the bus because it's so slow. So they can park it a lot and quickly and with no problem. It's not that quick. The goal came, Rob. Um, the Mason Mount goal came from yeah. a little moment in the game where it got a little mm, bit end to end and Everton strength, broke yeah. well and looked like a score. And then, mm. the, so all of a sudden, the game rhythm, the flow was different. And there's a turnover, they break, they score. That's different to like, okay, left, centre, here we go, up, so, back, so, wide. That makes so it hard to create in, in contrast, in the two teams then, would you are you, are you saying, because City dominate possession in, in sometimes a similar way, obviously it's like different in the possession, but are you saying that City's speed of play is better than, is, is more increased than Chelsea and that's why they probably create better chances with their possession than Chelsea's that gives people a chance? Because, Pep's often talked about, hasn't he, when people park the bus, how difficult sometimes it is for his teams mm. to break them down as well, yeah. whether you're a false nine or a striker. He's always talked about that being one of his issues with his team. But do, do, I, I think there's a difference between City's passing movements and Chelsea's passing movements, to, 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 to make to your point. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think I agree with that. There's definitely a lot more forward passes, City, when they can. But there's also a difference in the system that they play and the way mm. that they're dribbling, attacking Mares, Sterling, Foden, Grealish. They're the, they're the wingers. So their wide play is better than Chelsea's. Chelsea's players, I think Danny Higginbotham said it on the, the broadcast tonight, always want to be inside the, the ZX and the Mason mm. Mounts and the Pulisic. They operate from an inside position, whereas we've talked about on this show loads of times mm. before, Pep really batters the outside. He, he batters that whether it's the fullbacks, whether it's those wingers, whether it's yeah. midfield players making runs around those areas to get in those little red zones we talk about in behind defenders. So they've got it grooved off better, Rob, than Thomas Tuchel has. Mm. Again, it, it's it's similar but different. So I think it's a good good point and, and yeah. very different. Liverpool are different again. They don't mm. it's, they don't have quite so much controlling possession. I mean, still tons of it. Yeah. I just think Chelsea might, and that's why that's why Lukaku came in, Rob. And that's why I thought, and if many others thought, wow, this is different. Now you've got a real cutting edge to that that yeah. possession, that territory. But as we're seeing, of course, he's out with COVID right now. Mm. And when he comes back, maybe that makes a difference. But I still just feel, and if you look at the uh, the table of um, expected goals. Yeah, Chelsea is so far behind the top two, Liverpool and Man City. So, more more progressive quality in the wider areas might help. That being said, we've we've praised um, certainly Reese James for getting in good spot, yeah, scoring yeah. goals. But today it just didn't happen. Everton was sat back in there. There was no space wide. Um, and also, all that being said, right, they had two unbelievable chances in the first half. Of Reece James Chelsea going did, yeah, Reece James. Chelsea in, yeah. in the first half yeah. where they could have, they could have changed the game, the wouldn't first it? Goal much took, much took, earlier. Tuchel yeah. mentioned that in, in, in his uh, presser and it was interesting as well, Tuchel made a good point and he said that at the moment they have to work so hard to get goals but the opposition yeah. don't have to work so hard to concede and that's kind of also one of the problems Rob, for all that possession and, and, and things that you're saying that isn't happening at the other end, they're starting to get a bit leaky, the clean sheets are, are not quite the same so all of a sudden maybe you've got to score a couple of goals then, then you would no clean sheets in the last six in all competitions Mm. Isn't the team we've seen really under Tuchel from the moment he, he's been he's been through the door? Mm. Yeah, I mean they scored the goal today, Rob, and that should be mm. one 0 done and yeah. dusted. Yeah. They scored the first goal. I mean, I guess any team can score on on a set piece. It's just it's just a little period from like that at the moment yeah. where they're not finishing off. They haven't got the striker that they wanted to bring in to to finish these games off. And you know, mistakes conceding a set piece today. Uh, from Jared Braithwaite, his first Premier League goal, yeah, I believe. Um, goal, yeah. Tremendous for him in the 75th mm. minute. Uh, enjoyed his, his uh, interview afterwards. Mm. Young, raw, yeah. buzzing with from life. Carlisle, wasn't he? Uh, Young kid from Carlisle, yeah. Yeah, so uh, fair play to him and fair play to Rafa Benitez. Yeah. That organised the team, that rolled their sleeves up. This team has got spirit. We, we mm. said this you know, from last week. And then they're so poor, weren't they, in the weekend? And yeah, the game against, against Palace. Against Palace, yeah. yeah. They, they beat Arsenal on a high. They go to Palace. And yeah. it's it's that up and down, isn't it? It's that roller coaster that you, yeah. you just would like to see. You'd have a good performance tonight, as you say. And mm. he's got Jared Bowen. He's, he had Ellis Sims up top, 20 year old striker. Yeah. He had Anthony Gordon, 20 year old winger. 19 year old Jared Bra Braithwaite starts in defence comes up at the end, gets a, gets a really important goal for them. And mm. do you know what else I thought deserves it? a great um, sort of reward is is the Everton fans by the way mate 
I was listening, mm. I was watching the game, listening. God, they were singing and shouting in the first half. They were getting behind the team second. I mean, they get the goal and then they... I mean, they don't half give their all, yeah. don't they? I mean, if, if, yeah. if the players could play anything like as much as those... Certainly those away fans would give. I think, you know, mm. they'd be top four Matthew 11. But, mm. you know, they, they just they just want their club, don't they? And, and it was it was pleasing today because they were up against it with young players in the team, a little bit of inexperience against one of the, 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 the big hitters in, in the Premier League. And I, I thought they, they gave a good count of themselves hung in there, you know, broke when they can, had one or two opportunities, get a great goal through, through the kid mm. and, and, and deserved mm. deserved their point, to be honest. They did deserve their point. Just just finishing up on this game, Rob, like just back to the original kind of idea. Mm. It's obviously recoverable. They're not far off the top spot in the Premier League. Yeah. Um, Tuchel's got to, got, to, got to go again here, hasn't he? He's got to mm. show, he's got to mm. show what, you know, the, the, that he's merited the praise that we've given him and everybody's given yeah. him since coming into yeah. the Premier League with Chelsea. And of course, when the Champions League is, it was incredible, but it's a little challenging now. It's got a little blip, probably the first little continued blip where the defence hasn't been as good. The same issue pre Lukaku was there where it's a little bit tippy tappy. It's a little bit in front all the time. Even last the last few minutes, Rob, where it's like, get the ball yeah, forward. Yeah, go on, yeah. They're yeah. still messing around with the ball. Everything was a little bit in front of Everton. And again... Mm. When we used to play, Rob, that's fine. You have it over there. Yeah, yeah you could, yeah. yeah, you have the ball. You have the possession numbers. You're not really hurting us. And we've got time, um, you know, time and, and energy saving here whilst you're knocking the ball in front of us. So that's something that Tuchel's got to address. He really has. Yeah. And we, we've seen of all the great managers who come in, into this league, mate, at some point you get tested, at some point you yeah. get challenged. And it's it's how you react to that, how you, how you come good to good. Because that squad is deep enough and good enough, I think. I don't think we need to be talking about loads of additions. I think with, no. with that squad, if you get, you know, Kovacic back, you get Kante back, you get Lukaku back, yeah. Werner and, and one of, there's enough in that squad, but yeah. you, they've just got to work out, like you say, a couple of things maybe on training ground and, yeah. and stuff like that, which, which isn't going to be easy with all the games and the COVID at the moment. So they've got mm. to find a, a way of working out. Maybe video work is, is the future for Chelsea. Mm. Let's move on, mate, to the team who don't seem to have any problems at the moment. There was no questions about centre forwards. There was no questions about false nines, which means Manchester City won. Not only did they win, they purred to a 7 0 um, thrashing of Leeds. Bielsa, um, with one of his students in, in Pep Guardiola, came up very short with his Leeds team on this occasion. And the headlines for me were KD, uh, uh, KDB just take. On at his best when he's playing at another level, Rob takes City to another level, and City's ability to destroy you really with that passing and, and movement and and the, well, those goals that we always say, well, where are the goals going to come from? Yesterday was a perfect example of they can come from all over the pitch with City the way they play. Hmm. Yeah, the couple of things for me was the, I mean, Leeds is a unique game mm. and Pep talked about it it's like twice a year you've got to deal with this man-to-man -man marking mm -hmm. and it was yeah. pretty straightforward I think from Leeds I think it was Foden wasn't it played up front as a false nine yeah Foden for the most nine, part yeah. he came deep he pulled a centre back way onto mm. the outside Out. yeah. which left the space there for the midfield mm. players to run through and quite quite simply and honestly the Leeds players just couldn't Didn't handle the one no. the one-on-ones mm. Tyler Roberts was on Rodri which should be I mean, that should be, Rob. I know he's a forward box. It should be yeah, one of the yeah. easier man-to-man. -man. Just, like, make yeah. sure he's ahead of you. Keep goal side when they have the ball. But he, he certainly muscled, muscled him out for one of the early goals. Mm. Got yeah. by him a few times. Second goal, yeah. Kevin De Bruyne. It was uh, Adam Forshaw that just couldn't stay with De Bruyne. And it's a simple... I just thought it was a simple... OK, this is 1v1 one, one one and Leeds yeah. were nowhere near. Nowhere yeah. near. You know, maybe more, more tired from... From recent games, they've been looking a little bit better. But City's ability to to move the ball and to be consistent mm -hmm. with the ball and to have that that possession, that territory, but also just individually running past their guys was was yeah. a stunning part. And you're right, I made the same note. I mean, it's kind of scary the way they've been playing right now. And De Bruyne, mm -hmm. two goals, but not just that. If you uh, you know you we look at him play, if you looked at him really closely. He doesn't have to look fit and strong. Yeah, he looks, yeah, looks really, good really again, good. He? Yeah, looks and I good. watched it, the 85th minute. I think it was, he made an overlapping run on the inside mm. right position, Rob. He's fit. He's strong. He's ready to go. I and mean, that adds to what yeah. they've been doing so yeah. far, which is, you're right, goals from all over the place. And it's pretty remarkable. And 
You know what else about City, Rob, is, that's pretty remarkable? And it, maybe it's just something we haven't, we have said before, but there's no real strongest team for City. I couldn't tell you what the strongest team was. Yeah, I don't, yeah. There isn't a strongest team. Yeah. They got 20, yeah. they got 22 first yeah. team players. Yeah. Interchangeable though, players. aren't they? Yeah. John Stone's played right back, must he? Yeah, John no Stone's problem. John like a right back, you know, and, and fits in, you know, Kinsella could play in the midfield. They can play Rodri more in a holding position. I mean, it, it's just 11, well, don't 20. turn the goalkeeper, but turn 20, the goalkeeper. 20 20 yeah. players. But there's, there's 11 inter, interchangeable positions on the pitch and, and they play them. And all. There's one day, I'm telling you now, Pep Guardiola is going to get um, Edison out the goal. He'll end up in midfield one day just to prove Pep's point that you don't need a centre forward and you don't necessarily need a goalie. <laughs> he, 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 almost, he almost play like rush goalie. Well, you used to play when you're a kid, where the, the closest person to the goal can stop it going in the goal. I mean, he, he just is, re, is redefining things and, and the way that he played. Um, I, I just thought it was it was a great day for for thing. A great day for KDB, who went you know apparently was saying he's still been struggling from COVID and injury, and, mm -hmm. and he's obviously one of them. Rob, he has to feel good in himself to get the best yeah. out of him. And and when he does feel good, he, he there isn't many better in the league. I thought it was a good day for Jack. I thought it was a good day for Jack because. Not only the goal that's important, but in a yes. big win, in a good day, Jack was a big part of it. And I think that's important yes. for him to feel part of with the good group. Like, Absolutely with what, right. you know, we can win 7-0 with me, not with 7-0 and I'm sitting on the side and we're a good team yeah. and not scoring. He was part yeah. of it and I thought that was important for, for Jack. I thought it was really important. Happy on, the, on his left-hand side as well, where, where he played. Um, from Bel Bielsa's point of view, Rob, and, 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 I, and I have to go back to the, the point when I made it last year, I think, and some people weren't happy saying, oh, Bielsa plays this way. He's got, you know, a little question mark now with him when, when you get beat seven, any team, I don't care who you are. They, they haven't had a brilliant season. Yes, there's been injuries and, and other things that, that have contributed. But I still go back to the point where a great, as great a coach as he is, there should be more observation to those days when the defending that he set up and it's man to man or and it's it's running wherever they go if that isn't working a coach like him should be able to say okay we do we revert to something else and, and i'm not saying go away from his, his philosophy maintain the philosophy philosophy 95 percent but if five percent of the days were hold on we're getting done here like Foden's pulling us all over and we, we can't stick with our runners. I would think a coach of his experience and knowledge and, 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 and greatness when, when you talk to people around the game who've worked with him, have been around him, why there is no alternative. I, I kind of think if that was Brendan Rodgers or if that was Steve Bruce, we'd be saying, oh, yeah, coach has got to do something about it. For, for some reason with Bielsa, because of his standing in the game, and, and I get what he's done and, and how he's worked, it almost feels a reluctant to have that criticism. Yes, I, I hear you, Rob. Um, I, I just, it's so different what he does. If you've yeah. got in the back of the mind, oh, like it's not working, are we going to go back to our zonal? Mm. I, I still, I still don't have a problem, and this is just me. I still, yeah. this was a really bad day for Leeds United. Bielsa yeah, it said it's the worst, day. it's the worst yeah, day that Leeds has had mm. with him as manager. Yeah, apparently it's the first time he's had seven goals put past him as a coach. The heaviest, the heaviest defeat I think yeah. he's ever had. First time yeah. seven, so mm. so it's a horrific day for them. Yeah, yeah. And it hasn't been a great season. Um, mm. the, 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 I don't feel like you do, Rob. I just don't. I still don't feel like you do. I still think that this season, there's a ton of, they've got, like others, they've got a lot of injuries. Mm. He's did an incredible job to get them to this point. Um, last season was a joy, I'm sure, for Leeds fans to, mm. to, to witness how they could witness it, um, the way that they played. They're having a tough season. They're having a tough season. They didn't invest money in the summer, I don't think, or didn't spend much money on bringing on, on adding to this squad. Um, I feel it's like a grind out a little bit. It's not going to be the same. And then regroup and maybe add in the summer. I don't think it's time for the manager to change any change his philosophy. He's just he's just not that guy, Rob, is he? He's, he's never been no, that guy. I, I, and, and, and I'm it's, not it's saying also... change your philosophy. I'm, I'm not, uh, that's the yeah, difference. You, I'm not you, saying you change your philosophy. I, I just think that you can tweak things, Rob. You, Pep Guardiola's tweaked things. Everybody, including you, would say, 
Ooh, Pep should have got Kane. He can't win it without Kane. Now, Pep believes he, can't, he doesn't need Kane because if he believes in his system. And at the moment, he's proving that that system doesn't need Kane. Yeah. Now, yeah. listen, Pep knows if, if, if Man City were third in the table, seven points of grief, we'd, the, the, it'd be on him about, you know, oh, Pep's got to, he, he can't do it without the centre forward or blah, yeah, blah, but he blah, wouldn't blah. change. He wouldn't change anything, Rob. He wouldn't change the way they play. What, 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 what's your point? What, what are you thinking? Well, my gonna... point is Harry Kane would play differently than they are playing. With Harry Kane in your team, is different than how they're playing now. But, Pep's, but, but, but Pep believes in what he's doing and he's getting the results of what he's doing. I'm saying if things start to go wrong, like you're saying with Tuchel, Tuchel's got to work it out. We don't, you don't say Tuchel's doing okay, he's got a great group of players, they're just going through a bad patch. You go, this is a bit of a test for Tuchel. For some reason, and again, I'm, I'm a Bielsa fan, so I'm not, I don't want to show my, mm. like, oh, but I'm saying, I always look at those great coaches who tweak something then. Okay, we, we, people know that the, the man-for-man thing is an issue. Maybe on days when physically they're not great and that, that's going to get exposed. So is there a plan for when those days come, how can Leeds be a little bit different? How can Leeds stop the bleeding? Well, the, the, the only way, uh, and this is where I think we're having the difference here, is that yeah. I, I think the Chelsea Tuchel thing is is some minor movement tweaks and some, like, you know, something that's not as fundamental. And City would be the same as well. I'd be a little bit different, a little bit different on mm. Tuchel to, to get success, a little mm. bit different with uh, Harry Kane. This is this is changing so much, even though it's it, for certain moments in games. But for, for me to say I'm, I'm not, I'm not man-marking Earl, you're going to go in. A, you're going to go in a four-four-two. You're going to go zonal marking, and whoever's in your area, it's just a very different setup. Mm. It's a bigger change, Rob, that, that you're asking for, in my opinion. I, I, for those players that have been grip, like drilled really well, and it'd be also mm. to to have insurance guy at the back that's got no man man marking, and everybody else, they're going to have bad days. And it's also mm. like it, it's it, when they have a bad day, it's like well, the players. It's, it's, it's sort of so, man to man, so set on, on the individuals. If I yeah. have a bad day, if you, if you, get, like, if you yeah, get past you me, yeah, you're, uh, you you're know, it, it's like, it's easy. It's, it's always You've easy. You've got to, to win more manager. of those individual battles, haven't right. you, when you And, play and when you way. don't, it's yeah, more like, it's, well, it was uh, Tyler Roberts didn't do his job. Like, mm. that's why we conceded goals. Or if I'm Adam Forshaw, he didn't, he didn't stay with De Bruyne. Is that the manager's fault that he couldn't do it? Potentially it is because he did the the, the wrong matchups. Maybe Calvin mm. Phillips was injured. For sure, that guy in that position, he couldn't handle De Bruyne. Yeah, maybe that's so, maybe that's the point against maybe some of the bigger boys. Does he have to adapt that against those guys who are the top four? Let's when say, you say adapt it, Rob, adapt it. You're saying do away with the man to man. No, no, no. I'm not saying do that. I'm saying you could do part man to man or part passing on. You can pass people on to somebody like he's yeah. coming out there and I and I'll come in here. Not me follow Foden out there and leave that gap. Actually, me say to Alien or whatever, Foden's coming out, deal with him out there, or we'll let the ball go out there. But I I'll stay in the middle and not allow these gaps. Now, if De Bruyne is running off somebody or mm. or Rodri's running off, I'm there to deal with him. Yeah. So 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 a a a different kind of. Tactical and adapt, setup, adapting on the tactical setup in certain situations yeah, give me a little bit through. more, yeah, yeah, a little bit more of a, a security net on days when the opposition are too good or we might be having bad days. Again, listen, it's a little point, there, no, but no, I just think, I, I, I just think that I just wanted to put out there and, and we we try and be honest and try that. I think if that was other managers, for some reason the Bielsa thing, uh, and it doesn't it bug me, but it, it's just like. He can, he can also do a little bit better. He's the manager. He's a manager. He's a great manager of a team that we've seen play brilliant football last year. I mean, we're, we're a joy to watch. And at times have shown moments, but at times show naivety that I think is going to hurt him. Mm. Yeah, I think just finishing up here, he yeah. does it his way, Rob, I suppose. Yeah. And he, yeah. He'll probably say, if you don't want my way and you want somebody Correct. else to do it a different Absolutely. way with a plan B and a plan C and a plan D, when, then you get them. So it's I think as long as. Yeah. And I heard a few Leeds fans on the radio just driving back from the studio the other day. And mm. uh, it was kind of interesting. Like some of them were, were saying things like that. But most, mm. I've got to say, is like, yeah. this is a difficult year. Like Leeds, yeah. we can't believe how good, we can't believe where we're mm. at right now. We can't believe we're in the Premier League. We can't believe how good it is to watch them sometimes. This is a tough slog. And. Yeah. You know, it's it's going to happen a little bit sometimes. So yeah. no, it's, it's a good point, Robert. Yeah, I think we're yeah. we're always going to be a little bit different with that one because yeah, it's yeah. such a different 
Mm. The way he does it is so different. Pep said it like twice a year. We have to prepare for this. Yeah, it's yeah, so different. It's unique. Yeah, yeah. And maybe next year get people yeah. fit, get a few bodies in, and, and it'll look back a to bit doing more their like thing better. Yeah, yeah, like last season. Let's move it on to Liverpool, um, who were, were, were going quite nicely at the top of the table. Went one 0 down here. Uh, John Joe Shelby uh, bringing drama, but good drama from Newcastle's point of view. Scoring against his former team, but Liverpool um, got the goals back. Jota. Uh, mm. Salah and, and, and a beautiful strike from um, mm. from Trent, Trent Alexander and Arnold. Yeah. Um, just want to want to take you to Liverpool's first goal, uh, Robbie Musto. Uh, there was a collision from I think a corner that came in. Hayden stayed down. It wasn't too dissimilar to the De Gea, but whether it, it looked like a head injury. Newcastle players wanted the ball played out. Liverpool have absolutely no. Um, reason to have to play the ball out, they can continue to play. It's down to the referee to stop the game or, or Hayden was down, Jota got in the four post, has two attempts, brings them back level, Newcastle go crazy. Were you okay with the goal and with Liverpool playing on in, in the in the way that they did? Um I was I was okay with Liverpool playing on. I'm not yeah. okay with Mike Dean. Mike Dean <laughs> has got to blow the whistle. <laughs> He's got, has, I mean, has anybody ever been okay with Mark Dean? That's well, I mean, he did great avoiding Trent Alexander. Yeah, yeah, getting Arnold's out of the shot way later yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I mean, there's plenty of. This is different. There's mm. plenty of time for him to yeah. see from his position. Yeah. Two players came together. It looked yeah. like a head injury. It's right in the mm. middle of the box. Yeah, the tech's yeah. going on. You've got to blow the whistle. It's mm. not fair. Yeah. It's not fair. You know, and and uh, first of all, for the safety of the players. But but also when you've got a player, it was two down, wasn't it? it was two players were down, or certainly... two were down, and one got up and Hayden one stayed got, down. Right. Yeah, Shaw, sure, so, I think, or somebody. Yeah. You've got to blow so, the. He's right. I mean, yeah. people could stand on him. They could. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, just yeah. not. It's just not. It was awkward, so wasn't it? I mean, Jota was almost tiptoeing around him to get to the ball and then to to get the rebound. It's dangerous. Yeah, I, I yeah. didn't like it, but but I, I'm not going to criticize the Liverpool players because, you know, you're going to play on. You're attacking. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you might not have seen him in the middle, but the referee. I just thought. That he had enough time and he had an angle to see mm. what's going on. I'm blowing the whistle here. We've got to stop it. There's a there's a there's in a dangerous position. So I didn't like the referee. Didn't like the referee yeah, in that time. Yeah, I saw yeah. that and I thought this is, and I'm pleased you brought it up because I forgot about it a little bit. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I didn't like it. I thought the referee mm. should have blown the whistle. So tough yeah. for Newcastle there. I watched Eddie Howe. Everyone's jumping around in celebration. The fans are going crazy and he stood there mm. like this with his arm out. And I totally agree. Yeah, that yeah. that should that should not have happened. Yeah. Simple. You want. You wonder if that was at the other end and that was Trent down and that's at Anfield, he'd have blown yeah. the whistle against Newcastle. He'd have blown the whistle. And that's just not there. We're talking I about them. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Liverpool in the end got the job done. You know, it was a plucky Newcastle performance, but Liverpool get get the win again. Important win. Um, don't think they were quite the best. Thiago didn't have, have, have his best day. Mo Salah, Rob, could, just continues to... I mean, he's got 15 goals in the Premier League at, at this stage. That's, yeah. that's, only, that's only one less than, than Spurs have got as a team. I mean, it's ridiculous, yeah. his, his number. And he's, he's on for, he's on for thir obviously, 30-plus. He's on for... Yeah. Which, in, which, in a 38-game season, is mm. astounding, really. I, you know, <laughs> I mean, to score 30-plus in a 38-game season, I, it's mm. just remarkable what he's doing. And the way that he is right now, I know that the big concern with Liverpool fans is his contract, Rob. And yeah. I thought about this a little bit because I think when you get into your thirties, what is he now, by the way? Is he just uh, is he twenty nine or thirty coming up? Yeah, it's, it's, it's one. I, the... I think clubs and and rightfully so are just a little a little concerned about mm. players. Just oh, we've seen a Bamian right now. You could argue, yeah, 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 yeah. We've seen it with a few other players that just get over a period where they. But I think yeah. when you look at him and you look at his style of play, and you look how flipping chiseled he is, there's not a flipping ounce of fat on him, and how, how fit, and how durable, and how he plays every single week. I think you've got to forget about the age in this one. This is the one where yeah, it's like, yeah. he's an amazing he's, player. He's he Jamie Vardy, and he's Peter he Pan, he's one off. of them. He's one of them, he's, isn't he? He's yeah. a Jamie Vardy, yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. so in this case, mm. give him what he wants, you know, within reason, because he ain't dropping off, for me. Mm. As long as he's still hungry to play, He's going to get the contract that he wants. He says he wants to stay at the football club. Yeah. I think it's money well spent because, I, I mean, maybe this is the famous last words. I don't see him dropping off anytime soon, given how fit and hungry he is to score goals. And I think sometimes you look at players, Rob, and I look at him and he's a Liverpool player. He, you know what? He's almost like it won't look right to see him in another shirt now. He's, he's so committed to that football yeah. club. 
He so wants to do well. He's so driven. He so loves the. It so fits in with with what Liverpool are and how they are mm. and the great goal scorer. You're right. You, mm. you just feel. But in fairness to Jurgen Klopp, he said, you know, these contracts at this stage of career, at this size, take time, and we're just hopefully going through the process. So yeah. I get the sense that Liverpool are, are going to try and work through it. Obviously, it's about getting. Both parties have got to come out of it feeling it's the right deal. Um, but I, I, I think as long as Klopp's there, as long as Liverpool fans will have a say, and young, um, Mo Salah wants to stay at the football club, I think they'll, they'll get the job done. Yeah, he's, um, he's 29, he's 29, he's yeah, 29 in June. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. OK, Very mate, let's move person. it on. Liverpool getting the job done, getting the three yep. points, which was the most important thing. Let, let's move it to, to Arsenal, because I thought this was a really interesting game. At the end, it's Arsenal versus West Ham, an informed West Ham. West Ham was sitting fourth in the table before the game, um, taking on an Arsenal team in, in, in decent nick, um, looking to uh, with a, put the Aubameyang stuff behind them and, and get the job done. And they did. Another clean sheet, another 2-0 win. Two goals from um, youngsters Martinelli and Emil Smith Rowe. Mm. Mikel Arteta, in some respects, winning the PR battle, certainly if he's won with, with Aubameyang and that whole thing, putting that to one side. Lacazette was again the captain. And I, again, have to say, West Ham are a very good team, Rob. Arsenal were better on the day. Mm. Arsenal, mm. I thought, were better. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a very good win. I thought mm. the the tempo, the energy in the stadium, the energy that they played with football. I, I mean, at times, I mean, West Ham, like I said, West Ham are a good side. So the times mm. they didn't look like as much between them, yeah. but Arsenal still looked the more progressive team, uh, the team that that was better, that did look like scoring more often. Martinelli takes his goal really well. Lovely bit of football to create the space for him. Mm. Smith Rowe, you know, again continues to look a million bucks and is getting better yeah. and better and better. It seems, and it was a good win. Yeah, the the. The whole Aubameyang stuff that again, I, the whole captaincy thing, and that, you know, the club spoke to him and the manager spoke to him, and he's it's it, it's painful. It, it's such a, it was such a big story they've made it. I mean, it's it's that it's a big call from Arteta to go yeah, so yeah. strong on a player that, you know, we've had this conversation, but is, you know, it hasn't really been a problem for his whole career. Yeah, All of a sudden, yeah. under Mikel Arteta, he's. You know, for whatever reason, I'm sure there's a ton more things behind the scenes that mm. we don't know about, which is hard for us to really to get a grasp of that. But when you're winning games and when your team is doing well, and when you know some of your young players are providing the goals that Aubameyang should have been scoring, yeah, then it's all good. It's all mm. good, and Arteta will take that praise. And he and he and and hopefully for him and the team and the and the fans, you know, move together in a positive way and stay. I mean, they're top four. They're in the, you know, yeah, it's, top four, yeah. You know, I just thought, saying in the last time I was in the studio that, you know, that they're two points off top four, you know, everything's going for them. And yet you throw in this this huge story of Aubameyang was being publicly kind of vilified by the club and the manager. Yeah. It's kind of a risky move. But again, you play like that, and the young players score the goals for you, then it would be seen as a, as a good move. I'm still not convinced that this interaction won't hurt them further down the road. We'll see how Aubameyang reacts, Rob, you know, if he's going to get yeah. his head down, take the various slaps on the wrist and slaps everywhere to come back and be a part of, part of the team. We will see. Um, but for now, and the same on the North London derby, we'll need to have them out for, the, for being late. They won the game. It's all good. We'll see. We'll, this story yeah. is going to continue to be to be relevant. It just is. Unless, unless Aubameyang just gets pushed out of the squad until January and they manage to move them on in January, then, then it's, it's all done with. I think for Arsenal's point of view, that probably, well, it will be the best. It will be the yeah, best scenario, yeah, I think, for Marteta. Right. Yeah. Like, that's yeah, what he wants, obviously. Cleaner, I think yeah, he wants I him think out. So. And he wants to move forward. And, and you have to talk about... I wanted you to talk about uh, Gabriel Martinelli, because we, we we've we seen clips of him. He, he's had a bit of injury problems since, since he, he, he's been at Arsenal. But somebody reminded me that it's almost like an over-goal, over-tight goal that he scores where he comes in on that left foot. That was when Over was at his best scoring goals for, for Arsenal, winning FA Cups and, and Community Shields and that, playing from that side. And maybe, maybe you know, moving him on gives a chance to develop Martinelli, to give him more opportunity. Smith Rowe, Saka, Odegaard, young players who you've talked about. One of my, I was close to again, I don't know, I think we might have done it before, but I was close to this week's underappreciated as 
Arsenal's academy, I was thinking, in terms of, and I know Martinelli came in, has been a couple of years, Odegaard's been bought, but I think about Smith, Rowe and Saka and the players who, who, who've been in that mm. football club. Most times when you're struggling a little bit or things are difficult, you, you, I always think your, your, your pros, your experienced pros get you out of it. And if you've got good pros around, around the place, with Arsenal, I wouldn't say it's been the opposite, but they, it's good play. some young players have, have, have taken the weight of this football club in difficult circumstances, Rob, and, and, and continue to push forward with it. To sit fourth in the table with what's gone on and losing their, their best you know, strike and not being available and, and the, the fallout that what could have happened and if things didn't go well. I, I just think the young players deserve a little bit of credit here because um, they, they've stood big and they, they've shouldered some stuff and I think it stands them in good stead. They're starting to build their Premier League careers and they're understanding that sometimes not everything's great, not everything's right. You miss a player, you miss, you know, you're not, you're not informed, but how do you get, how do you stay in games and win games and not play so well, but get results? Mm. And I just think it, it's a, I get the sense of Arteta's almost preferring to go with those guys and, and maybe have a little bit of up and down, but hopefully in the next year or two, see these guys through and have a team that's his team with young players who've come t through difficult times and can take Arsenal on. So, you know, with good additions then bought in, in, the, in the relevant transfer windows, I always sense that's the way, it'll feel like that's the way he wants to go forward. A couple of things, Rob, I want to say there, and, and probably haven't got time now to go into mm. this, but I think a, a, a topic for us to get into one time is the the importance of senior pros yeah. for young players. I know that, that um, Danny Higginbotham was really strong about young players needing leadership and, and Danny was very mm. much against the Bamiyang and what he'd yeah, done and how yeah, the young yeah. players I, I would ask you a question for another day because it's, it's a lot to get yeah. into yeah is it really all that do young players really need senior pros to some, be great some pros? of these so, young players do they don't. really some of these young players don't a because they're more confident b I think they've been better schooled through academies and things than some of the times when we played you so I would I would argue but I think good pros around in difficult times are important I think they are important Mm. Okay. Well, again, there's a lot we could get yeah, into. Which yeah, we yeah. Well. One, one yeah. more thing, Rob, before we move on, because West Ham United fans will not forgive us. The red card. Yeah. Vladimir yeah. Sufal, yeah, second yeah. yellow. Yeah. Mm, I didn't mean, really I didn't really like it. I mean, it was interesting. David Moyes after was quite critical of Sufal. Thought Sufal should have just won the okay. ball cleanly without yeah, having to make the He said he made the, the referee challenge. had a decision, which yeah, he, which yeah, he yeah. did, but... He did. I'm, I, yeah. thought it was, I thought it was harsh. I thought it was I harsh. It was harsh. I, I thought it was harsh. Second yellow, you know, kept it a bit. I thought he got enough of the ball first. And I know it's one yeah. of them, well, you know, he made contact. But I don't know. Yeah, listen, if David Moyes ends up accepting it, then probably we should. But, um, yeah, I, I thought it was a little bit of fortuitous. And, and it was also, you know, just on that point that... You know, Lacazette, who looks like he, he's taken to the role and obviously he's a captain for, for the time being. There was, there was a time with, with an Arsenal team would, would miss that penalty and draw that game. That's, mm. that's how Arsenal have been in the past. Oh, they don't take the penalty. Oh, now they've let a goal in. There's a little mm. bit of difference. There's a little bit of something coming with this Arsenal group. And maybe it's young players together and the Ben Whites and the... Yeah, the Gabriels and and people and, and, and Ramsdales. There's a bit of something around about this group that, that that I'm starting to like, and it's great to Arteta really. So maybe he saw it be, before we did. Mm. Yeah, absolutely right. I think West Ham a little bit of a blip right now. Mikel Antonio, we talked about I think last time, just yeah, looks a little yeah. bit off it at the moment. Um, but yeah, I did expect a little bit more from West Ham. But fair play, fair play to Arsenal, fair play to the manager, fair play to these young group of players. The found there's there's a foundation there now, Rob, mm. which wasn't there before with certain players at the club. Now they've got a defensive structure. They've got a goalkeeper that's loving life, it looks like, and is going to be maybe a leader yeah. for this team. So, mm. yeah, looking in great shape. And, and top four uh, is, is a brilliant spot for them right now. Really, really great spot, considering yeah. the conversations that lots of people were having right mm. at the beginning of the season where they lost the first three, was it? Three or four games. Yeah, so, three games, yeah. yeah. Tremendous, three great run, games, great, great run. Yeah. Let's move on quickly to a few other results uh, yeah. in the midweek. Norwich nil, Aston Villa nil. Dean Smith against his former team. Stevie G goes from strength to strength, my friend. Four Flying. games, Flying. Four, four wins, two defeats. The defeats to Liverpool and City, both odd goal defeats. Um, just made a, made an impression straight away. I think you've said now that the thing is, how long can he keep it going? I suppose that's mm -hmm. always going to be the challenge. But 
all the indications I see, Rob, all the things I look at with the team, all the things I look at with the, the ex-player to manager on the sideline in front of the press, I mean, just A+. plus. Rob, he, he, Villa couldn't win a game. They couldn't win a yeah. game before yeah. he came. Fact, Jack Grealish defeats, left the yeah. club mm. and they were they were... They were really struggling, bereft of conference, bereft of everything, really. And wow, mm. what a what a what an amazing kind of boost he's given them. Again, it's like, let, let's keep it going. I mean, yeah. he's that's yeah. it's remo- remo- even if they drop off a little bit, that's still really yeah. really good because yeah, this squad's yeah. still kind of coming together. And uh, yeah, so far he, he looks a million bucks, really really good. Stevie G getting the points there. Brighton nil, Wolves one. Um, Brighton no wins in eleven, dropping. I think Brighton being. I think the Brighton we saw last season, lost possession, good football, but it's always a Brighton but. Um, can't seem to turn that into goals. Wolves, uh, well set up, well organised. No Jimenez because um, of his sending off, but he chung well played up front. Um, lovely ball from Neves to size. It gives them an opportunity yeah, with a bit of quality. Goal. Lovely, ball. Yeah, lovely, lovely, lovely goal. And, and, and that's mm. enough for Wolves to get, get the points. And, and Wolves are eighth in the league, Rob, 24 points. I think he's done a really good job, Bruno Large, um, just quietly going about his business. Look, but any any little worries for Graham Potter? Let's remember it wasn't long ago his fans booed the the, the draw, didn't they? Oh, I mean, he couldn't quite get his head around <laughs> it, and they had just a little bit of a, a dip, starting to go the wrong way in the table at the moment. What are they? They still got twenty points, um, and still be yeah. fine. Thirteenth in the league, twenty points. But any little worries for Graham Potter? Uh, only the same ones, Rob. The yeah. same ones of, of hmm. scoring, of scoring, and of course the, the first part of the season when goals were going in. And people are like, oh, this is it. The, the expected yeah, goals yeah. of Brighton is no always higher than they yeah. manage. This year, yeah. they've started to get the goals. and and But it's not fundamentally changed, I'm afraid, that. So they're going to continue to look good and play some nice football and possess a lot and look good. But the, the, the cutting edge is still the yeah. one thing that, that's come back, basically. It's just basically, it's just come back to what they had last year. So they're going to be fine. Uh, but it's like, sign somebody better. Sign, sign somebody better or, or again... Some tweak something where you get more shots, more crosses in the box, yeah. more players in the box, and maybe you're going to get a few more goals. Wolves, a, a, a great story. A great story. West Ham United, a great story. Wolverhampton Wanderers, mm. a great story. Struggled under uh, Nuno the, 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 towards the end of his career. Different way of playing. Uh, uh, Wolves, career at Wolves. Um, Bruno Lage, love him. Love him to bits. think yeah. he speaks with emotion. He speaks really well tactically. His philosophy is very, very strong, like Nuno's was, to be fair. And the football is a loads better. They've got players still to come back from injury, Rob, as well. Extra players yeah, to come back yeah, too. That, I mean, yeah. Pedro Neto just brings to mind a player that I really, really like. So excellent, brilliant job for Wolves. Like, he's, it's one of the, the good time stories of the of the league this year. You can't find a regular place for Adama Traore, which um, continues to, to baffle us, but not enough productivity from from the yep. great man. You wonder if he'll be there or somebody else might take a look at him. Um, the game at Sellers Park, Crystal Palace 2, Southampton 2, Palace 1 0 up after a couple of minutes, Wilf Zaha, and then Southampton come back with a Ward Prowse brilliant free kick uh, yeah. after a brilliant goal. And then, you know, you know it's a bad day, or it's not going to be your day when Jordan Ayew scores against your first goal in 44 <laughs> games um, against Southampton that, that brings them level points. Um, who'll be the happier the man- of the two managers there? Uh, Ralph Hasselhull. Yeah. I mean, I, it's so up and down. It's pretty incredible, really. I think, I think it's you know, there's there's good and there's there's good Southampton and there's awful Southampton. You know, mm. it's not there's not much consistency there. Um, for them, that's a good result because Palace are, are looking good at the moment. They're confident yeah. right now. The, you know, we know the players from them that are doing so well. Um, so that's a that's a decent result for Southampton, and they need more of those. Like, yeah, you know, we were both worried. When we were both worried about Southampton this season. Yeah, Adam Dunn. But then you yeah. see them a few times, get the results, and the way that they mm. play, like now nah, they should be okay. And then they have some disasters. So that much better, much better. That's a decent result for them. Not ideal, but better for yeah. them. Yeah. Little we'll mention for uh, James Ward Prowse. That's his eleventh free kick from that position. That's fourth in the all-time Premier League list. Seven behind the great David Beckham from that position. Yeah, he's See brilliant, he's, mate. Brilliant. Up. Yeah, he's, he's got enough time to maybe go close to that one if he can keep delivering like it is. I mean, it's almost like from that kind of distance you're thinking goal, which is um, some some standard that he's showing. Um, okay, mate. Listen, just before we move things on and, and um, talk about, we talked a lot about Arsenal and, and top four and Champions League. Let, let's just review the Champions League 
draw that was made on Monday. Um, it followed the disaster that was the F1 Sports um, Administration with, with you know, Lewis Hamilton and that's Verstappen that, that oh, you watched that? and couldn't oh, believe. Oh. Then we got the Champions scenes. League draw, which was just as chaotic in the first place. That the first draw <laughs> went wrong. They had to draw again. Um, not sure if it benefited some of the, the English teams. Certainly, it was Manchester United and PSG, I believe, would have been. The, the, it was in the original draw, but didn't come out. So, in um, for the English teams, Manchester City got Sporting, Chelsea faced Lille, Atletico Madrid against Manchester United is, 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 is an interesting one. Simeone coming to town and Inter versus Liverpool. Uh, with the, the four English teams involved in that. And then we've got Red Bull Salzburg versus Bayern, Benfica versus Ajax, Villarreal against Juve, and PSG against Madrid, which should be another interesting game, Pochettino um, against Ancelotti in that one. But um, decent draws for the English teams in the competition. You would think Man City should get over Sporting. Chelsea, Lille over two games. They can stop sure. being... Hitting goals away. Atletico Madrid, mm. Manchester United has got a nice ring to it, mate. I think that, that's going to be a difficult one over two legs for United. Yeah, it really is. I think Simone hasn't, hasn't been, the team hasn't been quite so good this year, but they find a way to qualify to this stage and over two legs, they're tough. They're tough. Mm. So that is going yeah. to be a difficult one. We're not sure what sort of, certainly Man United team is going to show up at that point whenever, this yeah. is in February, isn't it? I think it's like February, middle of February. Yeah. Yeah, um, so you'll have a bit of work by uh, then. He's had you? time to work with them. Mm. The whole team play should be better by then. Fascinating. Yeah, that's that's kind of one of the catches around the whole draw. And also, like, just going back to others, PSG versus Real Madrid. I mean, Real Madrid are picking up now, Rob, starting to find yeah, some form. Yeah, that's yeah. going to be one that we'll try and watch as well at the time. So, into Liverpool, big names, big clubs, into tricky, difficult right yeah. now. So, that's yeah. not going to be... Yeah, that's mm. going to be another hard game as well. So it's a pretty good draw. I mean, the first yeah. draw, I'm like, wow, look at this foot. And then it gets, gets like thrown out. I mean, it can't mm -hmm. be that difficult, can it, to, to program the computer? <laughs> I know. You've, it's, it, you've got one job to do, basically, isn't it? Oh. I mean, just, just get the draws. It's sorted. not they've just started doing it. They've been doing this for a long time now. So kind of weird. Yeah. We've got one thing to do, my friend, before we close today. It's our joint underappreciated performer mm. of a career, really. Um, it has to go to Sergio Aguero, who... Quite emotionally retired from uh, full-time football this year with um, having some health issues and, and decided that it was the right thing to do to retire. Uh, very emotional statement that he gave out at, at Barcelona. I believe Pep actually flew over to see him. I saw in some reports, don't know how, how true right. that was, that right. went over to him. But I just felt, maybe in, in closing, maybe a, a tip of the hat and a, and a few words for Sergio Aguero in, in what he's done for... English football, football on, a, on the world stage, really. And, and I know a player mm. you saw very early in his Atletico Madrid days and, and had him down as, this guy's going to oh. be very special. Yeah. I mean, first of all, it was, I mean, how difficult was it to watch him speak? Mm. It was heartbreaking. Mm. Everybody's there. He's struggling to talk, so emotional, just just saying how he felt and, and, and thanking everybody. I mean, it was such a touching kind of yeah. five minutes or so that he spoke for. Um, but yeah, I mean, what a player, what a player. And he, again, he thanked, I think, those at Atletico Madrid for trusting him as a 17, 18 year old player to come over and, and be involved in that club. And yeah, yeah. I, I covered La Liga at that point for another network and doing a lot of their games. And I used to, I just thought he was a brilliant, brilliant player, skillful, great finisher, strong, you know, could do the unexpected. Um, and, and because of his strength, Rob, I just thought that he, he could. He could do it in the Premier League. I think I said it in game yeah. commentary actually a yeah. couple of times. Like, God, I'd love to see him play in England, like in the, hmm. in the Premier League. And and of course, we we got to see that with Man City's buying of him and and just his consistency, important goals. We all know about yeah. the goal that won them the title. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but just in, in general as a player, he's got to be one of the best strikers the Premier League's ever had, ever seen. And there's hmm. been a lot of very good ones, of course. But he's right up there with what he's done at his club, the trophies that he's won. The consistency of goal scoring and wherever you look, by the way, the goal scoring has been incredibly consistent yeah, yeah. from Argentina at the start well, and with the national team with Atletico Madrid in La Liga, with Manchester City, big, big numbers all the time. Um, so it's, you know, it happens to everybody for whatever yeah. reason, the game comes to an end for them. This is a particularly sad one where it's a, a health issue with a chest and, and potential heart issue. Um, don't know the full details of that, but it, it sounds like it's the right thing to do, given the doctor's advice. And it just shows you, Rob, of, of all the success, of all the trophies, of all the, the money, I guess. 
mm. what it means to a to, yeah, a, to, to a pure to, footballer yeah. that can't football, play yeah. professional football yeah. anymore. Yeah. He's weeping yeah. when he when he when he realizes and says it out loud that he's not mm. going to play anymore. So that just gives you a little bit of insight into players, and it's not all about the mm. the money and everything else. It's playing an incredible sport getting paid well for it so yeah i couldn't i couldn't speak any more highly of sergio aguero love watching him love commentating on him and love to see the success he's had particularly with manchester city and the trophies and the accolades that have, that have come his way yeah five titles one fa cup six league cups i mean ridiculous yeah. and, and the thing one of the things you know why i felt it was important as an underappreciate because i do think he's gone under the radar for some people mm. Rob. i think he's, he's gone as a bit underappreciated when i think of Players of Player of the Year. I don't think he's ever won the PFA Player of the Year. I mean, his goals stand up there with the very best. I'm not sure often he won Player of the Month. Um, he was very rarely voted in the PFA the team. team of the Year. Yeah. The team of the Year. I mean, you know, I don't know. For me, the sadness that I'll never be able to say Aguero, the purest striker in the Premier League, because that was how I used to feel about him. I always used to say, Rob, if I was if I was a, a coach in any position, and it's a last minute of a game to win a title, who do I want on the ball to finish? I'd say Sergio Aguero. Of all the players, and, and the Shearers are brilliant, and the Henrys, and and, and the the Coles, and the, all the great names who, who've played in in this league, Van Persies and Rooney's, and all of them, one on one. If I've got somebody to put my money on, who I believe mm. will 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 almost grow in that situation i take aguero that's what mm. that's what he's meant to me over the league like just goals in, in a team where we've seen actually they, they can work it without goals he, he was so important to that city team he, he was 20 goals guaranteed like bump that, that, that there's your goal yeah, there's and, your 15 and, and, plus. and the, the rate of them as yeah. we've just seen on our little graphic there mm. prolific the most prolific yeah. goals per minute or whatever yeah. is in the league yeah. is he's the best in the premier league history so you know, it didn't always. He had his injury issues, certainly in the last few years of his uh, of his career. Um, yeah. There it is again. We'll say it again. Yeah. Average one goal every 108 minutes, yes. which is the best in the Premier League. Mm. Um, for those that are listening to this to this as a podcast, that that's pretty outstanding. And that's because maybe others he didn't play as many goal games because he had his injury issues, but the yeah. goal scoring was always still there and very very prolific. But I think it's good that you remind people that he wasn't really appreciated as much as yeah. that stat tells you mm. and also the trophies that he won the way and the way that he played the game don't we yeah. all love a skillful player mm. rob that can can, can flick can can can, can beat players also, with his do, creativity do you think, in the box? do you think because he he probably isn't as media friendly i know maybe the language has been yeah. he didn't do often he didn't often do interviews do you think sometimes that doesn't he loses a bit of connection that maybe an Henri who's great talker and, mm. and, 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 and makes a good connection, you know, and, and plays a lot of that Rooney, you know, it's got something about Rooney, like the, the school book, school kid who, who came into football, the Michael Owen was mm. the young kid who everybody thought, you know, came off a school playground to take the Premier League by storm. Is it, did he lose a little bit of something because he wasn't particularly media friendly, that he's quite an understated guy? gets on with his business. You didn't, it's almost like you didn't really know Sergio Aguero. You saw this great goal school, you saw the goals, but then he, he was gone from, we didn't really ever see him in the week. We never saw interviews or, you know, he wasn't one of those guys, was he? No, it's good. It's a good shout. It's, um, you're absolutely right. I think the, the grasp of the language wasn't great at beginning mm. wise. And he's, yeah, I just, if he if he's not comfortable doing interviews, he'll, he'll just say, I don't want to do them. And he won't have to yeah. do them. We didn't see him a yeah. lot. We didn't see him a lot. And maybe that's part of it, Rob. Maybe the way that City spent a ton of money the people weren't respecting yeah. certain players in that team and what they did because oh City are gonna you know they win it they spend all the money they got a great team but he was a special special player and uh, yeah yeah he'll be missed yeah. The, it, yeah. It, you know in the game in general wherever he was gonna play of course Barcelona is there for he hadn't played many games for them uh, and it's nice to see that they gave him the you know the send off and, and that yeah. little setup that he had to kind of say a few words so. Uh, yeah, it's just yeah. One hopefully, of those we'll, we'll we'll see him back at, at Manchester City. There'll be a statue, yeah. or there'll certainly be um, a, a pitch named after him, or, or something. And uh, yeah, we'll yeah. Get, we'll get to say our, our good boys in, in, in the right way. But a tip of a hat to to one of the greatest that, that's played uh, as an attacker in the Premier League. So, mate, it's a midweek when COVID again affects the Premier League with five of the weekend's games postponed. But for those that played midweek, it was normal service resumed for Man City. 7-0 win, a seven straight 
wins for them at the top of the table. Liverpool got past a plucky Newcastle United team, but Chelsea stuttered to a draw against a well-disciplined Everton outfit. We'll be back on Sunday, that's December the 19th, to review kind of whatever games are playing. If there's matches, there'll be the two Robbies. Actually, if there's matches, there'll be one Robbie and one Timmy. One of the, <laughs> one of the Robbies is down in Miami getting himself a bit of sun. Uh, but for now, I'm Earl, he's Musty. Together with the two Robbies, thanks for watching and listening. Be safe, stay healthy, take care of yourself. It's a good night from me. And it's a good night from him. Good night. Good night. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7am Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.